Well, a newly revamped national selection for Lithuania has just come to a close, and the winner is a rising star who has a song that's really resonating across the country. Combining heavy dance beats, mysterious lyrics, and an energetic performance, Sylvester Belt will be bringing the song Look Telk to the Eurovision Song Contest 2024. <laughs> From the time where it debuted in the first semi-final, Look Talk has been gaining a lot of momentum, and eventually it became the number one song in the country. And because of that, there was substantial confidence that this was going to be the entry for Lithuania. But it wasn't considered to be a done deal, because one of the acts that was also competing to represent Lithuania has their second best result ever at Eurovision, The Roop. When they won the right to represent Lithuania in 2020 and 2021, they finished with massive leads in the televote, and both times they set records for total votes. So with that and the 8th place at Eurovision that they have under their belts, it was assumed that when they were announced as artists that they were going to be the likely choice. But the reception around the song that they were competing with this time just wasn't as positive, at least when compared to what else was on offer. They still finished 3rd in the end, but the majority of the public support actually went to Sylvester. So to talk a little bit about the song itself, I think one of the reasons why it was such a clear standout from the beginning was because it has this unique sound. Sylvester has said that he's inspired a lot by electronic and rave music, which makes a lot of sense when you look at even certain elements in isolation. But it's also not your everyday club banger, because it's really melancholic, and the lyrics add to that feeling as well. I'm still trying to wrap my head around them going off of the translations, but you have lines like, am I still alive? Do you recognize me? We're standing in the silence of a radio playing, and I don't want to dance anymore. That's the kind of irony that I really like sometimes when the beat of a song is so appealing, but the lyrics are saying another thing that contradicts that. And I mean, it's not uh, reinventing the wheel, let's say, but it's still, I think, a good example of why these kinds of songs are so appealing, the kind of sad dance songs. There are also features like the orchestra hits that really punctuate the beats and add to the dark feel of it. And it's not in the exact same vein, but it reminds me a lot of a dance song from the 90s that some people might recognize. It's called Nightmare by Brainbug. I guess I just see it as a combination of sounds that we don't really see duplicated that often. I mean, there are a lot of songs that are tapping into 90s and early 2000s dance, but none of them quite go about it like this. Now, with respect to the visual choices, I think the overall aesthetic is a perfect match. The darkness, the color scheme, it all just feels like a natural choice. The overall movement, I think, is also very well thought out. From the flashes on the LEDs, to the camera cuts, to the choreography, which also looks like it was inspired by shuffling, all of the elements work together to keep a constant rhythm and make the performance engaging for the viewer. They even managed to do something that is normally a pet peeve of mine, which is putting the artist's face on the LEDs, the way that they go about it is a lot smarter because they've cut him up, they've integrated him into the aesthetic and the movement, so it looks purposeful, not just like they need something to go there. This is essentially ready to go as far as I'm concerned. Whatever changes they would need to make would likely just be around adapting to a larger technical setup, and there are other ideas that they could maybe incorporate, other kind of notes from club culture, like I was even thinking about LED gloves, but obviously it would need to be tested, it might end up being a little bit too much, and I think what they have right now is pretty good. And so when talking about Eurovision and the result that this song could get, at this moment, I don't really see any direct competition for this. I am expecting that we're going to hear other songs that are also tapping into like 90s and 2000s dance, but right now, this is playing its own game. When it comes to the final and the jury appeal, I think that there's a sleekness to it that they could appreciate. It's also tightly performed, which is usually a good sign. The only thing that I think it's lacking would be big vocal moments, which isn't to say that it needs them because the song is fine the way that it is. It's just that when thinking about the jury criteria and that one about vocal capacity, which is one that I've never really been a big fan of, the songs that have some level of vocal flexing tend to be the ones that really break in the jury points. So it's just to say that I don't think that this is going to be a jury heavyweight, but it could still do well. Lithuania's best result is sixth place, and I would like to think that Topping that could be possible. The thing is that when we're looking at the songs that we have right now, my feeling is that most of them are going to be competing for the 5th through 10th 
place spots and there's not enough room for all of them. And we only have half the songs at this point, so who knows? Let me know in the comments what you think about Luktelk. As you can probably tell, I'm a big fan. And if you're from Lithuania, are you excited for your entry this year? I'd love to know. And if you haven't done so already, I hope that you subscribe to the channel so that we can keep chatting about national selections and Eurovision as it approaches. We're only halfway there and we're about to get tons more entries over the next few weeks, so I'd love to have you around. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you.